Welcome to Chapter 13.4, The Reformation Ideas Spread. As the Reformation continued, hundreds of new Protestant sects arose, influencing Protestant thinking in many countries. In England, the break with the Catholic Church came from Henry VIII. He and his wife, Catherine of Aragon, had had one child, Mary Tudor, but Henry wanted a divorce because he wanted to marry another woman whom he hoped would bear him a male heir. However, the Pope refused to annul Henry's marriage. Furious, Henry had Parliament pass a law to take the English Church from the Pope's control. Henry appointed Thomas Cranmer Archbishop of the New English Church. Cranmer annulled the King's marriage, and in 1534, Parliament passed the Act of Supremacy, making Henry the head of the Church of England. Many Catholics, including Sir Thomas More, refused to accept the Act of Supremacy and were executed. The Catholic Church later canonized More for his stand against Henry, and when Henry died in 1547, his son, Edward VI, inherited the throne. Under Edward, Parliament passed laws bringing more Protestant reforms to England, and when Edward died, his half-sister, Mary Tudor, a Catholic, became the Queen. She wanted to return England to the Catholic faith, and hundreds of English Protestants were burned at the stake. On Mary's death in 1558, the throne passed to her half-sister, Elizabeth. Elizabeth made reforms that became known as the Elizabethan Settlement, which was a compromise between Protestant and Catholic Protest uh, practices. Elizabeth restored unity to England. She kept many Catholic traditions, but made England a Protestant nation. As the, as the Protestant Reformation swept Northern Europe, the Catholic Church began a counter-reformation. The Pope's Council of Trent reaffirmed Catholic beliefs that, that Protestants had challenged. Ignatius of Loyola founded a new religious order, the Jesuits. They followed a rigorous program of strict discipline through religious training and absolute obedience to the Church. Teresa of Avila established her own order of nuns dedicated to prayer and meditation. Both Catholics and Protestants fostered intolerance and persecuted radical sects. Innocent people were executed for witchcraft, and in Venice, Jews were pressured to convert and forced to live in separate parts of the city called a ghetto. By 1555, much of Northern Europe had broken with the Roman Catholic Church. Pretty much all of Scandinavia um, had become Lutheran, and as well as Iceland, and England had broken away and become the Anglican Church. And Scotland and parts of uh, the Netherlands and France and Switzerland had also become uh, influenced by Calvinism. In 1509, while Luther was studying for his doctorate at Wittenberg, John Calvin was born in France. And uh, Calvin's theological writings would profoundly influence the social thought and attitudes of Europeans. All over the world, especially in Canada and the United States, there are many uh, denominations that have been influenced by Calvinism. But prior to his conversion to um, Protestant Christianity, he experienced a religious crisis in 1533. Um, he was convinced that God had selected certain people to do his work, and Calvin believed that God had specifically called him to reform the church. So he accepted an invitation to assist in the reformation of the city of Geneva. Um, he worked hard to establish a Christian society that was ruled by God through civil magistrates and in and created what we consider to be called a theocracy or a city that is um, governed by the church. This became a model of a Christian community in the 16th century. Protestant reformers um, were greatly influenced by Calvin's Geneva. Calvin wrote about his ideas in in a book called The Institutes of Christian Religion. And it, um, it was first published in 1536 and then later published in 1559. And it became, um, it illustrated a very, very important part of Calvin's theology. 
uh, which was his belief in the absolute sovereignty and omniscience of God and the total weakness of humanity. Calvin maintained that men and women cannot actively work to achieve salvation, but it's only God's infinite wisdom that decides that decided in the beginning of time who would be saved and who would go to hell. And this viewpoint constituted the theological principle of predestination. Calvin's Geneva held a very high standard of morality. It was very austere. There was public fasting and there was a curfew in the evenings um, and any fashionable clothing, dancing or card playing or any heavy drif drinking was absolutely forbidden. The, um, anybody who violated these moral principles uh, was often um, punished severely and sometimes if they continued to um, persist in their sin they could be um, kicked out of Geneva and if they were heretical they could be burnt at the stake. Uh, Calvin actually uh, passed judgment on over 20 people who were killed for their um, uh, heresy. But Geneva was also a haven for religious refugees from France and England and Spain, Scotland, Italy. They all poured into the city and were um, greatly influenced by Calvin's uh, model of Christianity um, in society. And so uh, it was actually the beginning point for a lot of um, Protestant denominations like the Presbyterian Church, which uh, was later founded in Scotland, and the Huguenot Church in France, and the Puritan Churches in England and New England. There was also an interesting group called the Anabaptists, who, um, which Anabaptist means rebaptize, um, and the Anabaptists believed that only adults could be uh, could make a decision about their religious faith. And so they would they would rebaptize people who wanted to join their church. Um, they returned to the they wanted to return to the kind of church in the early church um, time period, which was very um, socialistic in some ways. So a sharing of of private property, um, and they believed that there should be a separation between church and state, and also religious toleration. They didn't try to force their values on other people, but they believed in religious liberty. They refused all kinds of uh, public offices. They didn't serve in the armed forces. They stressed pacifism. And um, you can tell that this uh, sect of people um, were the predecessors to later groups called the um, Baptists, the Mennonites, the Amish, and even the Unitarians, which aren't really a Christian denomination anymore. In England, there were several precursors to the English Reformation. Um, one, William Tyndale, um, who lived in 1525 and um, actually went to Antwerp in the Netherlands in order to print uh, the English translation of the New Testament and then have merchants smuggle these testaments into England. They were distributed by the Lollards who had been followers of uh, another um, earlier reformer, John Wycliffe. But the real change began when Henry VIII um, fell in love with Anne Boleyn. Henry wanted to divorce his wife Catherine of Aragon Catherine was the third daughter of Isabella and Ferdinand in Spain. She had previously been married to Henry's brother, who had died young, and Henry had then inherited the throne and his brother's wife, Catherine. Henry and Catherine lived happily together for 18 years. They had six children together, but only one of those children survived, Mary. Um, when Henry realized that he was getting older and that he did not have any uh, hope of having a son with Catherine, he began to look around for options. He felt like one of his uh, major duties was to produce a male heir for the English throne. And part of his fear uh, was stemmed from the very recent uh, 
civil war that had been going on in England, the War of the Roses. Um, he, he was kind of a product of that war because his grandmother and grandfather had been married to try to resolve a, and create a peaceful settlement to that civil war. Um, so he realized the, the need for having a male heir on the throne to um, stop any kind of questions about succession to the throne. Um, so he uh, fell in love with a, one of Catherine's ladies-in-waiting, a woman named Anne Boleyn. Because the church refused to um, allow he and Catherine to divorce, he decided to take matters into his own hands, and he broke with the Catholic Church and created the Protestant, um, a Protestant denomination in England called the Anglican Church. It was in, in name everything, but it was ca Catholic in everything but name, um, with, in, with uh, Henry VIII as the head of the church. And so with this new power, he was able to uh, divorce his previous wife, Catherine, and marry Anne Boleyn. And he, uh, she was already pregnant by that, way, by that time, and he hoped to have a male heir, and was very, very disappointed when Elizabeth I came instead of a, a male heir. He promptly had Anne Boleyn beheaded, and um, Elizabeth was uh, declared illegitimate. In 1534, the Act of Supremacy passed by Parliament declared that the king was now the supreme head of the Anglican Church. Henry had all the Catholic property confiscated and distributed to all of his to his nobles in order to gain their support for this new movement um, in against the Catholic Church. About twenty five percent of all the land of England had belonged to the Catholic Church, and when it was confiscated, it doubled the royal revenues that helped to build up its military, and the nobles, especially in the south, were able to purchase long tracts of land. Um, in order to enclose it to um, convert the land to sheep grazing or cattle grazing, monasteries were also closed down, and there was um, and Parliament passed an Act of Succession in 1534, where all of the king's subjects had to take an oath of loyalty directly to the king as the head of the Anglican Church. Henry ordered the execution of Thomas More, who had refused to take the oath. Thomas More was the hum humanist who had written um, Utopia. In total, Henry had six wives during his reign. Anne Boleyn was executed in 1536, mainly because she was accused of having an affair. Henry's third wife, Jane Seymour, had a son, Edward, who succeeded Henry upon the throne after Henry's death in 1547. In 1539, though, the sta Statute of the Six Articles was passed by, Congress, uh, by uh, the Parliament. The Anglican Church maintained most of the Catholic doctrines, i.e. the seven sacraments and the celibacy of their clergy and transubstantiation, um, which means that they believe that the Eucharist or the communion turns into the actual body and blood of Christ. But it was simply independent of Rome. Edward the Sixth was the new um, king on the throne after Henry VIII's death. Those who governed on his behalf were strongly Protestant. England moved towards Protestantism during his reign and adopted Calvinism. In, uh, under Edward the Sixth, clergymen could now marry. The uh, icons or images of, around the church were removed and new doctrines were preached in church, including salvation by faith alone and the denial of transubstantiation. There were only two sacraments that were um, preached in the Anglican church, baptism and communion. Edward died uh, at a very young age, and this led to more struggles between Protestants and Catholics. Mary Tudor inherited the throne next reigning from 1553 to 1558, um, but during her five-year reign, she um, tried to bring back Catholicism to England. 
Over 300 people were executed, including bishops and, Arch, uh, and the Archbishop Cranmer, um, whom she opposed her rule. They, she began to be known as Bloody Mary. Elizabeth I, the daughter of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, Henry's second wife, came to the throne in 1558, and she reigned until 1603, 45 years. She, ga she gained the nickname of the Virgin Queen. Um, she strongly supported the Protestant views and effectively oversaw the development of a Protestant England. Under her reign, she practiced politique, which means that she was very practical and carefully navigated between both Protestants and um, Catholics in order to create peace in her um, country. The Elizabethan settlement... Uh, was when Elizabeth and Parliament required conformity to the Church of England, but people were, in effect, allowed to worship e either Protestantly or Cath Catholicly in private. So um, Elizabeth didn't really want to make windows into men's souls. She just wanted them to outwardly conform to the standard. So in her church, the Anglicans... Um, largely resembled Lutherans. Some churches practiced um, Catholic means of uh, worship, um, but they used the Book of Common Prayer, which was instituted in 1559. Catholicism remained especially among the gentry, but it, um, they, couldn't be, they couldn't practice Catholic, uh, their Catholic faith openly. There were services in English, monasteries were not reestablished, and the clergy could, were allowed to marry, and everyone was acquire, required to attend church services for the Anglican Church. They were fined if they were absent. In 1563, the 39 articles, def, which were what the Anglican Church used to define their creed, were, were established. They followed the Protestant doctrine that that was vague enough to accommodate most of the English, except for the Puritans, and some Catholics unsuccessfully plotted an assassination of um, Elizabeth I. These Catholics were trying to put the, her cousin, Mary Queen of Scots, on the throne, but to remove the threat, Elizabeth had to agree to um, execute Mary in 1587. She didn't want to do this because she um, devoutly believed in the divine right of kings, and by her putting her cousin to death, who was actually a queen in Scotland, she was seem she felt like she was violating God's law of putting a monarch on the throne. But Elizabeth's long and successful reign placed her among the greatest European rulers in European history. From 1530 to 1540. Paul, Pope Paul III led a movement to reform the Catholic Church. This effort was also called the Counter-Reformation, and in 1545, Pope Paul called for a council in the city of Trent, which later became known as the Council of Trent. To end this, this council was called to end corruption and worldliness in the Church, and to settle issues of doctrine which had been raised by Martin Luther. The council declared that salvation comes both through faith and good works. Pope Paul III also strengthened the Inquisition to fight against Protestantism. The Inquisition was a special court that was set up during the Middle Ages. It used secret testimony, torture, and execution to root out Protestant heresy. It also prepared a list of immoral and irre irreligious books that Catholics could not use including the writings of Calvin and Luther. In 1540, the Pope recognized a new religious order, known as the Society of Jesus and the Jesuits. Ignatius of Loyola was a Spanish knight who founded an order known as the Soldiers of God. Jesuits um, followed strict moral and spiritual rules. These rigorous training included uh, complete obedience to the church, and uh, they went out and ran schools and traveled to distant lands as missionaries.
Jesuit priests got all the way to China and to North and South America and helped to bring education and Christianity to many of the peoples in those areas. Teresa of Avila established an order of nuns, and her order lived in isolation, in eating and sleeping. They practiced a, a great amount of restraint. Um, they dedicated themselves to prayer and meditation. And after her death, Teresa was canonized as a saint. By 1600, a majority of the Europeans remained Catholic, but Protestantism had a major foothold on the continent. The Catholic Reformation succeeded in bringing back many Protestants in the Reformed Church, and re religious conflicts influenced political debate, which erupted into wars throughout much of Europe, wars such as the Thirty Years' War in, in Germany. This heightened passion about religion also resulted in intolerance and persecution. Between 1450 and 1750, about 10 uh, well, tens of thousands were killed as witches, especially in Germany and Switzerland and France. Th most of those accused were old women who um, had lost their husbands or were um, on the fringes of society. Jews faced more and more persecution and restrictions during the Reformation. They were expelled from Spain in 1492. And in 1516, Venice ordered Jews to live in a separate part of the city called a ghetto. Luther called for their expulsion from the north. And in the 1550s, the Pope added new restrictions. In the late 1550s, many Jews migrated to the Ottoman Empire or to the Netherlands, and some even went to the New World.